right, thanks for tuning in to our last discussion on long division. Today we're going to be looking at problems that have decimal divisors. So the question we're going to attempt to answer here is how does a decimal divisor change a long division problem? And the short answer is that it adds an extra step. Um, but really the only question is, is where do you put the decimal? Because the rest of the problem is exactly the same as other long division problems. So a couple of rules here on where we put the decimal. And the first rule is that you cannot have a decimal divisor. So if you have one, you're going to have to change that into a whole number. And the second rule is that whatever you do to that divisor to change it into a whole number, you're going to have to do the same exact thing to the dividend. And the reason for that is that we want to keep the relationship between those two numbers the same. So how are we going to change that decimal divisor into a whole number. Well, we're going to multiply by powers of 10. And if you're not familiar with that terminology, that's simply these numbers right here, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so on and so forth. Those are our building block numbers. They are our place value numbers. Um, they are the basis of our number system. That's why we say we have a base 10 system. So we're simply going to multiply the divisor by a power of 10 to turn it into a whole number. Now, I want you to uh, watch here what, what happens when we multiply a number by a power of 10. I'm not going to say anything, but I want you to watch and see if you find a pattern here. Okay. Hopefully you were able to see a pattern here, and it's however many uh, digits we have in the power of 10 we're multiplying by. Uh, we're simply going to move the decimal place over that many. So here we're multiplying by 100, has two zeros. We're going to move our decimal place over one, two digits. And 1,000, which has three zeros, going to move our decimal place over one, two, three digits, and just fill in with zeros there. So... Uh, when you multiply a number uh, by 10, just simply move that decimal place over to the right. And this is exactly what we're going to be doing to change that decimal divisor into a whole number. Now, really quickly, we'll look at dividing by powers of 10. You don't have to know this for long division, um, but it's uh, you know just the opposite of multiplication. And, and you should see a pattern here as well. Um, you know, if for no other reason, then it's a nice shortcut for you to um, be able to divide numbers by uh, powers of 10. Um, it's also uh, nice in knowing that uh, it's how our decimal, or it's rather how our place value system works. So see if you can see the pattern and, and note how it's different than multiplication. There are powers of 10. So basically, if we're going to divide, which is the opposite of multiplication, we're going to move the decimal point in the opposite direction because we're going to end up with smaller numbers. So we're going to go to the left. So if we want to divide a number by 10 or any power of 10, uh, we're simply going to move the decimal point to the left, however many zeros there are. So here's our problem. We have 1.5 or 1 and 5 tenths divided by uh, 5 tenths. Now, we know that we can't have a decimal in the divisor, so we're going to have to change that. And the way we're going to change it is by moving that decimal place over to the right. So I'm going to take that decimal point right here, and we're going to move this over one spot. And we're going to do the same thing, of course, to the dividend. And we can go ahead then and rewrite this problem. We can get rid of that decimal on the outside there. And it's just a simple division problem from here on out. Uh, go ahead and bring that decimal point up into the quotient. And 5 into 15 is going to go 3 times. We'll multiply that down and get 15. Subtract. 0 is less than 5. And there we go. Now, 
what we want to do at this point is we want to ask ourselves if this answer, if this quotient makes sense. Well, let's think about this for a second here. Here we have our original divisor. We have 10 pieces, 5 out of 10, so that's 5 tenths. And we're asking how many times does that fit into 1 and a half? Well, hopefully you can just kind of in your mind picture this. It goes three times. So our answer of three makes perfect sense here. Here's another example. We have 11 and 89 hundredths divided by 2 and 9 tenths. Once again, we have a decimal in the divisor, so we can't do that. We're going to go ahead and move that decimal point over. And we're going to move it over one place. And we'll do the same to our dividend. One place. Rewrite the problem here. Get rid of that decimal. Bring our other decimal up. And from here on out, again, it's just a regular long division problem. Now, one thing to note here, we do have two numbers in the divisor, so we're going to do a little bit of mental math here really quickly. 29 does not go into 11. It does go into 118. How many times? Well, 29 is just about 30, and I know that 118 is right around 120. So the question I'm going to ask is, is how many 30s are in 120? I can just simply count by 30. 30, 60, 90, 120, or you can do it that way. That's going to go four times, and we'll go ahead and multiply that down and see how that turns out. Four times nine, give us 36, put my six, carry the three. Four times two is eight, plus three is going to give me 11. Go ahead and subtract, compare, two is less than 29, so I'm good. Bring down that nine, and we're going to go ahead and divide 29 into 29, goes one time, multiply down, 29, subtract, and 0. Here we go. So again, we'll go ahead and ask this question, does my answer make sense? Well, we started with a number that is really close to 12. And we divided it by a number that was really close to 3. So we ended up with 4 and 1 tenth, which is right around four, it's what we would expect. So four and one tenth four and one tenth makes perfect sense here. So back to our original question, how does a decimal divisor change a long division problem? Uh, basically, it just adds a step in the beginning, and we're going to have to turn that decimal divisor into a whole number by moving the decimal point to the right as many places as we need to make it a whole number. And then don't forget, we're going to have to go ahead and make sure we do the same thing to the dividend. Keep that relationship between the numbers the same. And that is it. Thanks for tuning in to our series on long division. Hopefully you can join us next time as we start looking at fractions. We're going to take a look at, you know, from the very beginning, what is a fraction, um, you know, all the way through you know, comparing fractions, adding and subtracting with unlike denominators, reducing fractions, all of that fun stuff. So hopefully you can join us. Thanks for tuning in and take care for now. Bye.